According to reports, this week, U.S. intelligence officers notified members of Congress and U.S. allies of Russian advancements in developing a new space-based nuclear weapon that could threaten America's extensive satellite network. Now, many in Washington find the timing of this report curious. It originally stemmed from a cryptic message from House Intelligence Committee Chairman Michael Turner, and now comes amidst a congressional battle for funding Ukraine military aid and amending the U.S.'s surveillance laws. But under any circumstances, we should be concerned about the possibility that Russia could launch nuclear weapons from space. What do we know about these space weaponization developments? Joining me now to discuss it is retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis. He's a senior fellow for National Defense Family Research Council and author of Divided We Stand, The Globalist Scheme for a One World Government. Lieutenant Colonel McGinnis, welcome back to Washington Watch. It's my pleasure, Joseph. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you. Now, I want to start by getting your response to some comments that President Biden made earlier today. Let's go ahead and play clip one. First of all, there is no nuclear threat to the people of America or anywhere else in the world with what Russia is doing at the moment, number one. Number two, anything that they're doing and or they will do relates to satellites in space and damaging those satellites potentially. Number three, I, there is no evidence that they have made a decision to go forward with doing anything in space either. Lieutenant Colonel McGinnis, do you agree with that? Yeah, the, the Soviets or the Russians today, uh, of course, threaten us with their 6,500 nuclear weapons, whether or not they're in space or sitting next to the Kremlin in Moscow. Uh, the reality is that with long range ballistic missiles, uh, you know, mated with uh, nuclear weapons, which they have in the thousands, that they could easily strike the United States if they had the proclivity. Uh, really, the issue, Joseph, here is, um, you know, I don't know if it's about Ukraine, perhaps politically it is, uh, but I've written a number of books that address the specific use of space uh, by the Russians and the Chinese uh, to knock out our advantage. In other words, we depend upon the use of satellites to position our forces around the world. We do all our economic activities using satellites. And of course, uh, even the, the television we watch comes from satellites. So it's important to understand that we have all sorts of capabilities that depend upon outer space. And if you were to put a nuclear weapon in outer space, you know, targeting our satellites, uh, so be it. Uh, I don't know that's any more of a, a danger. However, uh, we, the United States, Chinese, and the Russians have all tested anti-satellite capabilities. And some are rather perfected. The Chinese have one that was put up in 2021 that was very effective, not only in you know, doing away with you know, satellite junk, but could also do away with our own communications abilities. So that's a, a significant issue we need to take into account. So point of clarity, is it not an objective of these space-based weapons programs to launch from space to Earth? Is this just a, a way of potentially in warfare taking out satellite communications abilities all in space? Yeah, well, essentially the, the capability of taking out satellites, you know, really it makes us deaf, you know, dumb and blind uh, here on Earth because we totally depend upon the, man you know, the maneuvering of our forces at sea around the world using satellites, you know, much like our national command authority. And so if we don't have that, we don't have uh, communication and therefore uh, we're not terribly effective. Now, of course, we have GPS. You know, the Russians have their own system. The Chinese have created their own system of 30 satellites, and they're constantly putting up new ones. Uh, but using space has always been a challenge. And it would appear that with not only those three nations, but you have others now, like the Iranians just put up satellites, the North Koreans have put up satellites, uh, the Indians and others uh, are using space for their own purposes. And we need to recognize that this is a new future war you know, environment, one that we have to really be very careful about trying to you know, bring it into regulation and 
to dominate it if we can. Otherwise, uh, we make ourselves incredibly vulnerable. But the objective, again, is not to send a nuclear weapon potentially from space to New York City or a, a population center, but to do that in space. Is that, am I understanding yeah. that correctly? Uh, you could do that, but it, it doesn't make any real practical sense. You know, putting a nuclear weapon up in a satellite and launching it toward a, a city. You know, we, we can do that essentially from anywhere on Earth today using hypersonics or just plain old uh, ballistic missiles. And so it doesn't make any logistical sense to do that. Um, now, we have nuclear reactors that power satellites, but to have a weapon up there. Now, the Russians have experimented with, with weapons in the past and in uh, Earth orbit. And of course, perhaps in time when we occupy the moon or Mars or elsewhere, uh, we'll have to have some sort of laser weapon, uh, which is, of course, uh, currently in development. So there are a host of things that are happening today, but I don't think that, you know, what we're talking about here is, is, is all that uh, earth shaking. Uh, we're facing thousands and thousands of nuclear weapons here on earth, much less, you know, putting them in space is not going to really you know, make it any more dangerous than they currently are. I think most Americans are under the impression that we have the military advantage in most senses. Does that translate to space as well? Do we have any kind of anti-ballistic weaponry that would allow us to counter a, an assault on our satellites in space? Likely not in the public domain. You know, th those things that we're experimenting with, we don't talk about. You know, th the Chinese have demonstrated an ability to shoot down satellites. Uh, we have as well. The Russians have. Uh, putting, you know, satellites or war-making devices in space, of course, would you know, be contrary to international law. But, you know, the Russians and the Chinese haven't you know, demonstrate a proclivity to abide by the laws of uh, the international community. And so we do not have a ballistic system that is necessarily going to be effective here on the ground against satellite weapons as yet that, that, that I'm aware of. However, we do have anti-ballistic missile you know, systems to knock down other missiles coming our way. Yeah, but it, it's a, a matter of numbers. You know, if if a thousand missiles came our way, we don't have that capacity. We have, you know, anti-ballistic missiles at Fort Greeley, Alaska, Vandenberg Air Force Base. Uh, we have those aboard Aegis ships. Uh, we have others, you know, certainly the Patriot, which you've seen demonstrated in the Middle East as well as in Ukraine. You know, we have those capabilities. But when you're talking about large numbers of incoming ballistic, perhaps nuclear-tipped warheads. You know, that's why you know, the Soviet Union fell years ago, because when uh, Ronald Reagan threatened to put up Star Wars and to shoot down everything they had coming at us, uh, they gave up because of the financial burden. Uh, I'm not sure that we're there yet, but uh, certainly the, the rising tempers around the world with Russia, China, North Korea, uh, Iran, and others, uh, we need to be on our toes. And we need, need to develop capabilities to undermine uh, those that are enemies, and clearly Russia and China are enemies, are developing. Of course, the concern that we're talking about here is Russia's ability to deploy these weapons in space. Uh, but on the topic of Russia, news broke today about the what appears to be an assassination of Alexei Navalny. He was Putin's primary opponent in the uh, Russian um, election in March of 2024. He's been in prison. Um, what's your response to that development in Russia? And are these related at all? Yeah, well, I, I think the uh, the assassination, uh, you know, would, he was a thorn in, in Putin's side. Uh, if you watch the Tucker Carlson interview uh, a week ago, you saw that Putin is a, is a pretty crafty guy, a former KGB Secret Service. Uh, I lived very close on the other side of the border from him during the Cold War in Europe. Um, he is not, a, um, not opposed to you know, taking out people that uh, oppose him. He's up for election for the fifth term as president uh, next month. And of course, Navaldi has been a, an opponent. Uh, he locked him up in jail after trying to poison him 
uh, a couple of years ago. And now, uh, if you believe the reports, he died mysteriously in a Arctic uh, colony, uh, basically a jail, uh, at the ripe old age of 47. And it, even his lawyer the day before yesterday said that there was no indication he was having a health problem. So the international people that were uh, gathered in Munich uh, Security uh, Conference just today, to include Vice President Harris, all basically called out Putin as an assassin. Uh, you know, whether it's the Latvian, the Ukrainian, uh, the United Kingdom, all these leaders made a very pointed uh, statement about Vladimir Putin's culpability in doing away with this you know, political opponent, which, of course, uh, was in Putin's way toward his fifth term of, of, as the president. Yeah. And that certainly is his M.O. So a lot of people, even without conclusive evidence, I suspect that's true. But in about 20 seconds, uh, Putin said this week that he would prefer President Biden to another term of President Trump. What's your reaction to that? Not surprised. Uh, Putin went into Ukraine because of Biden's uh, debacle in Afghanistan. Uh, Biden refused to put up deterrence against uh, that invasion of Ukraine. And of course, Trump has proven to be a very hard customer to deal with, and Putin knows that. So you know, I'm not the least surprised